and coming to grips with the situation inside Fukushima Daiichi means preparing the plant's damaged reactors for the four-decade-long decommissioning process. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers have been at it for more than a year now, and they've still got a long way to go. TEPCO engineers sent a robot inside the suppression chamber of one of the reactors in April for the first time. That's an area located at the bottom of the containment vessel. The robot had five cameras and a dosimeter. It traveled around much of the suppression chamber, which is 125 meters in circumference. NHK World's Hidehiro Hanada talks about the results of the inspection. Hidehiro, what's behind the decision by TEPCO officials to inspect the suppression chamber? The main purpose of the inspection was to check for any damage to the suppression chamber. At reactor number one to number three, high temperature melted fuel made a hole at the bottom of the pressure vessel, and part of the fuel had fallen to the bottom of the containment vessel and is lying there in highly radioactive water. TEPCO had initially thought the water level in the containment vessel of number two reactor was about three meters, but the inspection using an endoscope has found the water is just 60 centimeters deep. This indicates the water is leaking from the suppression chamber. The government and TEPCO are planning to fill the con uh, containment vessel with water to retrieve melted fuel rods inside. Any water leak must be located and repaired before filling it with water. And this inspection was the first step in achieving that. Tell us uh, uh, more details of uh, the inspection itself. Hi. Uh, this is an image of the south side corridor. The cover for heat insulating material wrapped around piping fell off, but the heat insulating material itself remains intact. So TEPCO thinks no damage was done to pipes and the cover fell off due to the earthquake or corrosion. A red cylinder-like thing here is an inspection manhole cover leading to the inside of the suppression chamber. Before the inspection, TEPCO had assumed water is leaking from here, but no water leaks or damage was found this time. When the camera of the robot was tilted downward, it showed a water surface through a scaffold. It's believed to be radioactive water leaking from the containment vessel. Did engineers pinpoint the location of the water leaks? Unfortunately not. TEPCO checked about 90% of the upper part of the suppression chamber but found no serious damage to pipes or facility, which means water may be leaking from the lower part of the chamber or from the pipes connecting the suppression chamber and the containment vessel. But the lower part is submerged in the water and not easily accessible. So TEPCO needs to develop new method for inspection. How does the work to stop the uh, leaks fit in with the decommissioning process? Well, the inspection has just started, so we can't say anything with absolute certainty. But TEPCO has learned this time, locating leaks is difficult even at number two reactor, which is less damaged, therefore chosen to be inspected first. As for the number one and number three reactors damaged by hydrogen explosions, TEPCO has no idea at all when to start inspections. The decommissioning process at Fukushima Daiichi is expected to take 40 years, but without decommissioning, there is no end in sight. It's not an easy process, but TEPCO needs to use all available knowledge in Japan and elsewhere to bring the situation under control as early as possible. Definitely lots of work ahead. Thank you very much, Hidehiro. NHK World's Hidehiro Hanada on Nuclear Watch.